Hello, and welcome to this video discussing ethics and managerial accounting, applying the IMA Statement of Ethical Professional Practice. The Institute of Management Accountants, abbreviated and now known as the IMA, is the Worldwide Association of Accountants and Financial Professionals in Business. It was founded in 1919 and focuses exclusively on advancing the managerial accounting profession, to strengthen on the job skills, better manage companies, and accelerate careers. From the IMA's website, management accountants are vital to the financial health of organizations. They make critical decisions, safeguard a company's integrity, and plan for business sustainability. They might be chief financial officers and controllers, budget analysts and treasurers, or one of the many other game changers on internal teams. When I worked in management reporting and analysis at Chemical Bank, which is now J.P. Morgan Chase, I was a management accountant. I also was one when I was an assistant vice president senior business analyst at an investment firm, which is now part of Deutsche Bank. Most of all, the majority of accounting and financial workforce are part of management accounting. There are a lot of people in accounting firms, although most people don't stay there their entire career. So these managerial accounting professionals help drive an organization's strategy and value amid an unpredictable market like now. They're working inside the organization, taking a deeper and more private cut of the information. The IMA's mission is to provide a forum for research, practice development, education, knowledge sharing, advocation of the highest ethical and best business practices in management, accounting, and finance. Their statement of ethical professional practice was most recently updated as to be effective as of July 1st, 2017. One thing that's interesting here is that the IMA has a statement of ethical professional practice because it wants to, not because it's required. Oftentimes, licensed professions like certified public accountants are required for state licensure to adhere to the AICPA Code of Conduct and any other state ethical conduct required for accountants. So this is voluntary to increase the integrity of the managerial accounting profession and it's not, and of course, all members of the IMA adhere to these standards. So the IMA Statement of Ethical Professional Practice is a practical guide for dealing with ethical issues in managerial accounting. We do this in the O'Malley School of Business to introduce ethics before there is a more formal coverage in other courses. So you will get a chance to study ethical accounting theories if you're an undergraduate in Philosophy 201, known as ethics. If you're an undergraduate, business, government, and society, we'll talk more about these ethical theories. So you might learn about utilitarianism, utilitarianism duty-based ethics, uh, virtue-based ethics. Another course, the graduate students and accounting majors often substitute this course for business, government, and society. You will take professional ethics at the MBA level. So the overarching ethical principles are first stated by the IMA to guide before we get into the specific standards. I took some definitions that I excerpted from Merriam-Webster's online dish dictionary just to clarify the meaning of these principles. Honesty is adherence to facts, straightforwardness. Fairness, impartial treatment, not treating somebody better because you like them or they can help you. Objectivity, looking at the facts, being free from bias. Responsibility, accountability, reliability, trustworthiness in one's duties. So these guide the principles. These are above and these are sort of more vague than the practical principles. I will also give some definitions of the, the sorry, the principles are more, more vague and more, more uh, intangible than the standards, which we actually even go in deeper to when we try to apply them. I also tried to get some definitions from Merriam-Webster for these standards, which we'll go into in much more detail. The first standard is competence. And I just tried to get a dictionary definition just because everybody might think of these words differently. 
Uh, I excerpted some of this. The quality of having sufficient knowledge, judgment, skill, or strength as for a particular duty. Confidentiality, the quality of being private or confidential, not taking information that is private and spreading it belong beyond where it is there is a duty or one is approved to spread it. Integrity, firm adherence to a code, especially of moral values. And credibility, the quality of inspiring belief. Are the accounting numbers believable? So the first principle has specific descriptive points which you will need to know in answering your ethics cases. Competence is maintaining an appropriate level of professional expertise by continuing develop, continually developing knowledge and skills. So you don't just go right out of school and quit developing your skills because more and more information and skills are, are important as the business world changes. Right now, there's more accounting information and business analytics skills required of accountants. Second is that you perform professional duties in, accord in accordance with relevant laws, regulations, and technical standards. There are standards, generally accepted accounting principles. For financial accounting, there are also management accounting standards. And finally, provide decision support information. That's what management accountants are here to do and recommendations that are accurate, clear, concise, and timely. They help the organization manage risk. Confidentiality has specific descriptive points. Management accountants having information inside the organization that's not published externally. Financial accounting information is published to bondholders, shareholders, and anybody that wants to look at the SEC's website or the company's website for external reporting. Management reporting, there's often confidentiality. You have information about things that are inside the organization that others outside do not have. So you keep information confidential except for when you are authorized to disclose it. Maybe you're disclosing information about profitability of a certain division that's not broken out in the financial statements to a bank or to somebody within the organization. Also, you can disclose confidential information when legally required. I would say if this information is not publicly available, try to keep it confidential unless you are authorized or forced to legally. If you take confidential information and spread it, let people know this is confidential information. If the person's allowed to have it, let them know that they might be able to do it. They might be able to use this information, but they're not allowed to spread it. And you monitor this to ensure compliance and you refrain from using confidential information for unethical or illegal advantage. For instance, you might know that this company is very, very profitable in one of its product lines and it's trying to spin off this product line as a new initial public offering. You're not allowed to trade or tell your wife or husband or tell your friend about this. You're also not allowed to tell a friend, let's say they try to close the divi their, their planning on closing a division and you're part of the budgeting and you know that they are getting rid of this division, you're not supposed to tell anyone until it is made public. Integrity has also descriptive points. Mitigate conflicts of interest. If you know that something that you are doing, you have a conflict of interest, you know, you are with this, you regularly communicate with business associates. Refrain from engaging in any conduct that would prejudice carrying out duties ethically. Abstain from engaging or supporting any activity that might discredit the profession. Giving information to outsiders, um, you know, talking or publishing things that you shouldn't publish, publish is both an issue of integrity and confidentiality. Also, you know, acting rashly, not taking your responsibilities um, not taking your responsibilities um, personally or anything personal that you would do to discredit the management accounting profession. Other, another thing is contribute to a positive ethical culture that places integrity of the profession beyond profession, personal interests. If someone asks you to do something that you think might be unethical, you might in a clear, calm, and non-threatening way challenge them and just say, I want to do things that are ethical and I'm not sure that this goes along with it. 
Credibility. Do people believe the management accounting information? Communicate the information fairly and objectively without your own personal bias. Disclose relevant information that could be expected to influence an intended user's understanding of the report. So not only do you give the report, if there's something outside the report that you're allowed to disclose that might influence how people use and understand the report, you make that available. Disclose any delays or deficiencies in the information. Just because you made it a report doesn't mean that perhaps you couldn't have made a better report if you had more information. You might disclose that you did not have very much time, that there's more information that you could put into this later in conformance with organization policy and applicable law. And finally, if you have any professional limitation or constraints that would preclude responsible judgment or successful performance, you might even say, look, this is not my area of expertise. This is the best I could put together for you at the time. How do you resolve ethical issues? When faced with unethical issues, a member should do the following things. Number one, but they also have to consider risks involved and safeguards in the organization that protect you against retaliation. Many of you might remember there are whistleblowers and sometimes, like the whistleblower um, the, in, the, in the federal government recently, there can be retaliations against people who cooperate with whistleblowers. So you take these steps and you also have to consider the risks involved. Number one, most organizations have policies to deal with situations where there might be an ethical dilemma. If your organization has such policies, try to use those first. If they do not, consider the other courses of action. You could speak with your immediate supervisor. Generally, the best thing to do is to, if you can't follow what's this, the policies of your organization, don't go above your immediate supervisor unless the supervisor is involved in the situation and you can't talk to him about it or you've tried talking and you can't do anything more. If so, you can present it to the next level of management. The IMA offers an anonymous helpline that the member may consult, request, call to request how key elements of the IMA statement of ethical professional practice could be applied to ethical issues. And the member might, if it's really a matter that there might be legal concerns, might consult his or her own attorney. And finally, if you're working for an organization and you feel like there's unethical things going on, you've done your best to alert people to try to follow procedures, you might consider getting out of the organization. There are whistleblowers in many organizations. They try to work within an organization. If they can't help that organization, they might start looking for another job. And people have done this at Enron and other corporations. So let's look at a case from your book, LRF Printing. Those in Foundations of Financial and Managerial Accounting will be applying the case this week. Those in Principles of Accounting, we've talked about this in class. LRF Printing provides printing services to many corporate clients. Although they bid most jobs, some jobs, particularly new ones, are negotiated on a cost plus basis. Cost plus means the buyer is willing to pay the actual cost plus a return or profit on these costs to LRF. Alice Riley is the controller or an accounting officer for LRF and she's recently returned from a meeting where the president stated that he wanted her to find a way charge more costs to any job or project that was on a cost plus basis. It's kind of like if you're a waitress in a restaurant, the more people order, if they give you tips on a percentage of the order, if you try to sell more expensive entrees, you'll, you may or are likely to get a bigger tip. So Alice's boss, the president, wants her to charge more, more costs to these cost plus basis jobs to make more profits. Um, the president noted the company needed more profits to meet its stated goals this period by charging more costs to the cost plus projects, therefore fewer costs to the jobs that were bid, the company should be able to increase profit for the given year. If you're looking at overhead or indirect manufacturing costs, indirect manufacturing costs have to be spread among all the jobs. If you spread the more of them among the cost plus jobs, you will have 
you know, more profits. Alice knew why the president wanted this action. He wasn't particularly concerned about accounting principles, but rumors are the president was looking for a new position. If the company reported strong profits, the president's opportunities would be enhanced. Alice also recognized accountants can use judgment. She probably could increase the cost of certain jobs by changing the basis used to allocate manufacturing overhead. Remember, manufacturing overhead are indirect manufacturing costs. So the questions are, who are the direct stakeholders? Who are the stakeholders? There are both direct stakeholders and indirect stakeholders. Indirect stakeholders do not take action, but are affected by the action of the direct stakeholders. So one might say, well, certainly Alice is direct, maybe the president, but who else could be affected if Alice decides to change accounting allocation methods to please the president? Who are those people whose jobs might have more cost? Who are the people who are shareholders or bondholders, um, you know, creditors, investors. So it's not just the two people involved, but there are people that face consequences from this decision beyond those two. Second question, identify the ethical issues involved. Ethical dilemmas often aren't because people are trying, most people aren't that I've met at least aren't rabidly unethical, aren't trying to do the wrong things and cheat, although those do occur occasionally. But most ethical dilemmas are when values are in conflict. Alice has personal values and professional values that may be in conflict with what her organization or boss wants her to do. So this is the ethical issues involved from Alice's point of view. Her personal values, her values as a managerial accountant, might conflict with what the president wants to do. And also remember, just because changing accounting methods is legal doesn't mean it's ethical. Ethical goes beyond what is strictly legal. Another question, which principles of the IMA Statement of, professional eth of Ethical Professional Practice are involved in Alice's decision? Explain the reason why you choose any of the four principles. You might choose one, you might choose more than one, but you must explain the ones that you choose. And these are honesty, fairness, objectivity, and integrity. Explain which standards within the IMA Statement of Ethical Professional Practice are involved in Alice's decision. State the specific parts of each standard. So don't just choose competence. There's three different parts within competence that might apply, and you should explain why they apply. And then finally, what should be done? What are the possible alternatives for actions for Alice? What would you do in Alice's position? What steps does the IMA suggest for resolving ethical issues that might apply to this situation? So, please feel free to use this presentation as a review before turning in your ethics case or cases. Uh, there are other cases, you know, in Principles of Accounting 202, but this is just a refresher on ethics in general. And good luck and get started, Jaspers.